how the most innovative ice cream is made? Let us take you to our wonderful ice cream factory. In Camleone is located in Aidofshina in the heart of Ipava Valley. Known after high hills, strong winds, good wine, and clear water, which is also a part of our production process. Established in 1991 by a visionary having the courage to become number one in ice cream production, Andre Slokar founded the company to make his dreams come true. Why choose us, you ask? We are experts for innovative products that stand out. Your audience wants the magic. We create the unexpected with you and adopt the irresistible taste to different market needs. 15 production lines, the newest technology, a large development department, a super modern lab, and a devoted team. Creating unique frozen products has never been faster. You make an ice cream wish, we make it happen as quick as possible. We are industry known for business agility. Creating something that did not previously exist is our passion. Your ideas will be realized by our awesome team of highly skilled professionals. For example, we can make a tailor-made ice cream extruder designed and fabricated in just eight weeks. You too can enjoy the benefits of our production lines, recognized for innovations that enable us to deliver truly imaginative products. When it comes to quality, we don't compromise. Following leading global measures such as IFS Global Food and BRC British Retail is our mantra. We are proud of industry awards that recognize our efforts. With much respect for our environment and the nature, we've started to use the packaging which is 70 to 80% recycled. We are one of the first in the industry who started to thin the walls of plastic packaging and our water towers are supplied with reused water. As a successful business leader, you're acknowledged of the crucial importance of effectively organized logistics. Located in the heart of Europe, we're close to ports and transport corridors and guarantee the shortest delivery times. We enchant smiles and unite generations for already 30 years. In Camleone, expect the unexpected. We are globally oriented. Because of our bold and adventurous nature, we often target the markets that are the most difficult to enter. Two of these are the USA and China, where the regulations related to importing food products are extremely strict. In China, they are particularly strict for dairy products. We are thus even more proud to be one of the first European ice cream firms with import permit for China. Because this is a distant market, we target it with the innovative products. This is why we can afford the high transportation costs related with long-distance exports. Because of the seasonal nature of our products, we look for markets that are complementary in terms of the main season for ice cream consumption. We are thus present in both the northern and southern hemisphere. Next to covering European countries, the USA and China, we also cover New Zealand and Australia, among others. This helps us cover fixed costs throughout the year. In other words, we need work all year round and thus combine markets that can provide it. We constantly monitor the developments in different markets so that we can capitalize on any opportunities that might emerge. At the macro level, the primary market selection criterion in Income Leone is the innovativeness of a market. This is a firm-specific criterion, as our business strategy is based on innovations. Innovativeness means different things in different markets, though. In England, it mostly refers to visual innovations, as the English-like ice cream that photographs well before it is consumed. The Germans, on the other hand, pay more attention to perfected flavors. At the moment, vegan products are a trend. Finally, there are also markets where solely launching a new flavor is considered innovative. We consider these different aspects of innovativeness for each market. 
and compare them with the stage of development we are at in the company. If there is a match, we start planning market entry. Other criteria at the macro level include market size, purchasing power and economic growth. Because we are already globally present, physical proximity of a market has become a less important market selection criterion. At the micro level, it is first and foremost crucial who we collaborate with. We usually choose between indirect channels such as the use of distributors and direct collaboration with chain stores. We use a distributor in England where innovations are growing exponentially and access to information is crucial. The distributor can also communicate with multiple buyers, as well as takes part in our brainstorming and product development. In Spain, on the other hand, we employ the second approach, because our target buyer there, the Mercadona chain store, has a 54% market share. For us, this is advantageous, because we can realize greater quantities with a single product. It takes the same amount of work to develop a product, regardless of whether we sell 100,000 multipacks or 2 million multipacks. So we try to capitalize on economies of scale when possible. We also have to consider other factors, such as the local taste. Chain stores usually request for basic products as a condition to enter their stores. We rarely start a partnership with extremely innovative products. It took us almost two years instead of the usual two or three months to develop a relatively simple classical vanilla ice cream cone for the Spanish market, because Spaniards have a completely different taste to that in Central Europe or the Balkans. There are truly many factors involved in the market selection decision-making process. We also monitor the political situation in individual markets. In the UK, for example, we paid great attention to Brexit and the related developments because these are extremely important for business. I would like to stress, though, that the precondition for our international expansion were a strong position and business performance in the domestic market. It was the Slovenian market that equipped us for international expansion. We rarely exit the market. This is because our market selection process involves thorough market analysis. When we outgrow a buyer or a market, we tend to adapt the form of cooperation or add new business partners and markets to the mix. Because of our success, we can mostly discuss adding markets to our portfolio. When it comes to adding new markets, we have several advantages. First, our products can be immediately replicated in similar markets with the same turn of the seasons, such as the UK and the USA. At the same time, we are always six months ahead of the Australian market, for example, where the same products can be replicated yet again, in this case with a slight time delay. Second, although geographically distant, some of our target markets are very much related in terms of business environments and consumption patterns. The German, Austrian and Swiss markets are connected into the so-called Dach region. Scandinavian markets, which record the largest ice cream consumption in the world, form another such regional grouping. We cater both successfully. Third, our company is well positioned as an extremely development-oriented firm. Finally, having developed industry-specific networks, we can combine data from different sources and stay well informed about the developments in ice cream manufacturing and consumption. This is why we can accurately assess our current competitive position as well as the steps needed to outperform our competitors. In other words, we are always keeping our eyes wide open for new opportunities, which we try to capitalize on in an informed fashion. We have an important rule when it comes to buyers. A buyer should not exceed 25% of the firm's overall business. This ensures that we are not overly dependent on a single buyer. The same holds for markets. This has proven to work very well, especially during crisis. 
This is because market and buyer diversification results in risk reduction. First, when there is summer in the north and winter in the south, or vice versa, our sales in these markets balance out the seasonal nature of the product. Second, with diversification, we can also immediately redirect our attention to other buyers or markets if a larger buyer terminates the contract with us or if we perform poorly in a market. When looking for a new market, we always have in mind two or three alternatives. We can use them if it takes too long to successfully enter the primary target market. Entering a market takes time and work. We constantly monitor the existing offer in the market. Because we are developmental partners with large multinationals that prepare detailed market and other analysis much in advance, we have an insight into their findings very early as well. We then join their data with our own as well as that provided by distributors and stores around the globe. Because our business planning is based on information, it is much more effective. It is impossible to fail if you plan in an informed fashion. We also search for niches. When Lidl opened its own ice cream manufacturing line two years ago, their partners from the ice cream industry were terminating contracts with the chain. We, on the other hand, said, no, we will do the opposite. This paid off. We generated 7 million euros revenues in only a year with our niche product. To sum up, gathering and combining data from multiple sources and markets allow us to set trends for products and strengthen our international position. I always challenged myself to develop products the buyers would buy more likely than those offered by the competition. I wanted to be different and innovative. I consider innovativeness to be a combination of several elements. The first is the human energy driven by enthusiasm. This is something we value and nurture in our company tremendously. The second element is the idea. This is our raw material that needs to be in constant supply. However, the idea has one bad feature. It happens very quickly that an individual is left without ideas. This is why a systematic approach fostering a continuity of ideas, both internally and externally, is needed. Last but not least, knowledge uh, is another crucial element of innovativeness. We invest greatly in our employees' knowledge. One can buy raw materials in the stock exchange at known value at any given time. Knowledge is what adds value to the products and drives success, though. Partner selection is an interesting process. I do not like the buyers who are immediately satisfied with the first product we offer them. It is the demanding buyers who stimulate innovation and progress and make us better. We thus seek partnerships with buyers that challenge us and drive our development. Adapting our offer to these buyers often requires significant resources. This includes time, money and skills of an interdisciplinary team capable of innovation. Four years ago, a multinational copied one of our products. We were devastated, especially since this resulted in huge loss of business. But we also knew that being copied by a multinational meant that we were doing something right. The desire for constant improvement is what drives us further. There have been very few technical and technological innovations in ice cream production over the past few years. For example, we are still cutting extruded products with wire, although there are other options such as laser cut using automotive industry. 
This is something that we unfortunately do not use in ice cream manufacturing. Our owner is a quick thinker and responded to this deficiency in the market by establishing a team of technical and technological developers. With this team, we then introduced multiple new technologies and ideas to our production processes that even multinationals had not developed. With a strategic time delay, we now offer these solutions to them as well. Because we are more attentive to opportunities, more flexible and faster, smarter even, time after time again, we keep surprising them. At the end of the day, this is the key to success that contributes to multinationals taking us seriously as a development partner. Lately, we have had cases where we started selling our knowledge and R&D rather than solely our products. Selling knowledge and innovative approaches might be a direction we go into in the future.